But let's get into our team then. Uh, I feel confident enough to take the goalkeeping position once again. Alison Becker can can have that role. Gorsty, what's your back for? Yeah, probably not too too different from um, Thursday night, to be honest. Um, <clears> that is Liverpool's strongest back five on paper for me, isn't it? Trent on the right, Robertson on the left. You can make an argument for Simakas, but um, still would go with Robertson over him if uh, you put a gun to my head. Van Dijk and, and Matip. Although Canate has been in, in decent form as well, to be fair. Yeah, on that, just therefore preempting maybe a strong lineup. I suppose with the Arsenal game not decided by any means and, it, and a place at Wembley on the line for it, do you think he might not think of switching things up a bit for this game with the fact that otherwise it's all of a sudden, having not had a game for a little while, most of them obviously rested against Shrewsbury, having to, to go through three big games in a week? Yeah, quite possibly, but um, in terms of how the game panned out yesterday, they didn't have to do an awful lot of running. They, they, they were camped on the halfway line for, for most of it. So, um, yeah, it'd, it'd be interesting to see the, the kind of amount that they've run uh, yesterday against the game against, you know, whoever, Manchester City, say, for example. So, uh, I don't think they'll be too, um, too tired from Thursday's shift. No, fair play. Theo, what about your back four? Yeah, I reckon it would be similar to that. Um, you've got enough days after it for recovery for Arsenal to go strong against then. More of the concern is if you've got the recovery from the first leg going into this one. And then when you're thinking, well, how much did the players actually train last week with all these false positives? Like how many of the, I think Trent was the only one who got COVID, but how many of the others couldn't train because they thought they had tested positive and then it turns out they were okay? Uh, you don't know how match fit they are behind the scenes. We, we saw some players, Alice in particular, just given the game on Thursday because he needed an appearance. You haven't got upset League as Cup much. Debut. League Cup debut, of course. Um, but then I think the only one you can really claim is maybe Canate for Matip, just because Matip, we, we know what his injury record is. He's very fragile. You don't want to have him playing so often in quick succession when he's had this time out with COVID. We know he actually did test positive, so he's maybe one you've got to protect a bit more. But Alexander-Arnold, Robertson and Van Dijk make up the rest of it for me. So you're going with Canate, are you? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, right, yeah, cool. I wasn't sure. You were, you, were, you were toying with it, but you didn't commit to it. Anyway, uh, Theo, stay with you then for the midfield. Midfield three? <laughs> There's only three or four of them are available anyway. <laughs> Fabinho, number six. I think that one's the obvious one. Um, Jordan Henderson. He's the captain. Don't have many options there. I'm not going to keep James Milner in, though. I would be tempted to do 4 2 3 1. Maybe just have those two as the deep ones. Right. So there are um, you two, are you? Are you going to yeah, go with that? Yeah, I've told myself into yeah. that. I'm going to do 4 right. 2 3 1 because Jota right. was that poor at right on the right against right. Arsenal. Okay, so we'll, we'll we'll wait for your front four. We'll have them all at once. But Gorsty, what about your midfield? Is that a three or is that a two? No, it's a three, but it's, um, I'm dropping out Milner. I think. Um, I think it might be a good game for Curtis Jones. Actually, I thought he was quite bright when he came on yesterday and <clears throat> probably Liverpool's most promising player in the last 20 minutes. So um, bring him back in and uh, keep Henderson and Fabinho in there. All right, your front three before we before we get the suspense that's building for Theo's attack. What's your forward line, Gorsley? <laughs> um, three going into three, isn't it? There's not too many options unless you, you want to play Oxley chamberlain in one of the wide areas or you throw a little bit of a Wild card in there like Gordon, but uh, Nico Williams could it, he play right wing? He could do, yeah. Because he only played there once against Leicester this season. Come on for a little bit at the end of the Preston game, didn't he? Um, yeah, it's better the devil, you know. I think you're gonna have to stick with Minamino and, and Jota and Firmino. Maybe Minamino on the right, Jota off the left, despite me. He sounds so depressed to say in this goal. Yeah, just because. <laughs> you yourself into it, Gorsty. The, Kai the, Gordon, the, go on, throw him in. Do you just lack a bit of thrust, don't they? Um, no, no, no real pace in that front three. Um, and I don't think for, I think for me, no, what wide would just be an absolute aberration. As much as I think Jota is better through the middle, I think he's at least capable of doing a job on the left. I've got a feeling here. Theo's going to put both Jota and Firmino through the middle. Theo. Go on, what's the front four and how are they lining up? Jota and Firmino through the middle. Yep. Jota in front of Firmino. Uh, Minamino on the left and 
Oxlade Chamberlain on the right. Uh, harsh on Curtis Jones. He, he did do well when he came on. But when we've seen him in the front three in the first team, he's not looked as comfortable as he has in midfield. Um, he, he can come on and be a bit more controlling in the second half. Uh, there is that temptation to put Cade Gordon and Innocent there just because he's the natural fit for that uh, right forward. But he's a teenager. He's only played for the team twice just because he scored against the League One side. <laughs> uh, maybe it's time for him to have a Premier League debut off the bench. That It could be the sort of game that you can make that decision. But Oxley Chamberlain, he, he's got that experience of playing in the right before. You'll know better, that better than us. Ten years ago, yeah. Yeah, it might have been ten years ago, but he's still done it. He, he's still got that myth that he, he's got a bit of pace about him. Uh, whether we, we, he actually does, because we haven't seen it for a while, who knows? But it's still a position that he can do. And at least then you've got your goal scorer up front. Like, it means they can still have an off day and you still think something could fall to Jota and you could win you the game. Yeah, I thought against a direct team, maybe Ox could have been a guy to play in the, the midfield and or run about the place as he, he often does at Anfield. But alas, you guys haven't selected that. Before we go then, predictions. Gorsty, what's the score going to be? Uh, back to win and ways, 2-0. That's with certainty. Theo? I keep being positive with these and Liverpool are rubbish, so I'm going to say 2 all and hope that it works the other way. <laughs> right. Brilliant way. Brilliant way to end the pod. Cheers, Theo. <laughs> you can always, can always trust and rely on you, mate, for the upbeat ending, even yeah. when uh, Ian Doyle's not about. But anyway, right. That's all we've time for on this edition of the Blood Red Podcast. Do remember the agenda with uh, Gorsty and Matt coming up over the course of the weekend, talking through the state of play with Liverpool in the transfer window and ahead of the game at Anfield behind enemy lines. Also, another pod offering to come your way here from us on the Blood Red channel. But from myself, Guy Clark, Theo Squires and Paul Gorsty, Thanks for your time and your company. It's bye.